Today, I'm going to show you how to create a mean and gritty sports portrait in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode is going to be perfect for you sports photographers out there or just anyone who wants to make someone look nasty, mean, and gritty. We're going to show you some really cool techniques to bring up those highlights and bring down those shadows, adding a little bit more definition to your subject. We're also going to show you an awesome sharpening technique that you can use to sharpen the tiny details as well as the huge details on your subject, leaving them nasty and mean and sharpened to heck and looking like they're about to well hurt someone, which is perfect for sports photography just like this. We're going to have so much fun, guys. Let's get into our episode. All right, guys, here's our image for today. We've got a boxer with his shirt off and he's nice and shredded and looks great. Now, this is the type of image that's perfect for a sports portrait. We've got a couple key lights here on the left and the right hand side, slightly behind our subject. And that's why we're seeing these highlights on the right hand side and the left hand side. And you can see those reflections right there. It looks like a couple strip boxes in our subject eyes. If you're ever curious about like what lighting a person used in a studio portrait like this, a lot of the time you can just look at their eyes because that's going to actually reflect the lights themselves. So in this case I can see there's a strip box to the camera left and one to the camera right. Those are just like long thin soft boxes. Okay, so this is a perfect type image for this editing and this is like a gritty sports type image. So like guys don't use this type of editing if you're trying to like edit a picture of your grandmother and make her look super sweet. This is not that type of editing. Okay, well the first thing we're going to do, we're going to duplicate our background layers. So I'm going to hit Control or Command J to duplicate that. Now we're going to change our layer blend mode from normal down here to hard light. Okay, and this is just gonna enhance the highlights and shadows on my subject. Now you probably noticed by now the colors are totally off and that's because this hard light adjustment layer, or sorry, setting this to a hard light blend mode, it changes the lights and darks, but it also changes the color. So we need to go ahead and bring that color down a little bit. And we're gonna do that with hue saturation. So I'm gonna hit control or command U to bring up our hue saturation. Okay, you can also go to edit, sorry, image, adjustments and down here to hue saturation. I always use my keyboard shortcuts, it's a lot faster. Okay, now here in our hue saturation, what we wanna do is bring our saturation down so we don't have such a weird amount of color on our subject. You don't wanna go all the way down to zero because we're gonna you know, take away a lot of the color from our subject, but down here right about negative 70%, negative 70, let's just type in negative 70, that's gonna work most of the time. All right, we'll hit okay there. So we can see we just have like a bit more like hard definition on our subject. Now in this case it's a little bit too strong of an effect for me so I'm going to bring my opacity down just a little bit to kind of reduce that effect. So we still have that really nice cool effect on his skin but it's not going to be as strong. Okay so that's a really cool tip that gives it the kind of like that dark contrasty color. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to sharpen the mess out of this. So it's time to sharpen our image and I'm gonna do this in a bunch of different steps. This is gonna allow us to sharpen the small details and the large details. So the first thing we're gonna do is duplicate our background layer. So click on your background, hit Control or Command J to duplicate it. We're gonna drag that up to the top there, okay? And then we're gonna be using this just for sharpening, not for color at all. So I wanna go ahead and remove all the color first, okay? So we're gonna to go to Image, adjustments and all the way down here to desaturate. I wanna take down all the color. All right, now the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna right click and we're gonna to go to convert to smart object. Now the reason we're converting this to a smart object is because we're gonna be using a high pass filter and I wanna use this high pass filter as a smart filter, okay? So if you have a smart object, you can use a smart filter. Now, what does a smart filter do? Well, a smart filter will allow you to edit that filter over and over and over again. So instead of saying like, this is set, like if you, for instance, if you have a blur as a smart filter, if you blur it and decide later you want a different amount of blur, all you have to do is go into that filter and you can change the blur afterwards. Okay, so that's what a smart filter does. It allows you to continue to edit it. So you have to create a smart object first in order to use a smart filter. So we just created our smart object. Again, easy to do, just right click on a layer, and go to convert to smart object. 
Okay, now we're gonna go to filter, we're gonna go to other and all the way down to high pass. Okay, so high pass filter, we're gonna choose any radius right now, it doesn't really matter. Let's just go something like that and hit okay. All right, now we can see this looks totally weird. We're gonna change our blending mode from normal down to soft light. Okay, and here's our smart filter. So we have our layer, our background copy layer, and then we've changed it to a smart object and we have our high pass as a smart filter. So I can turn this off and on and see what that does. Now the other cool thing I can do with this is I can change this high pass filter there we go, just double click on that. I can change the radius now of my actual filter. So you can see the lower my radius goes, we're gonna be affecting small areas like bits of skin and pores and things like that. The higher my radius goes and we're gonna be affecting the image kind of overall. So the real key here is to get a mix of these to blend together. All right, so let's try that. That looks pretty good right there. We've got, this is kind of being, we chose our high pass, Let's just double click so you can see it again. Radius of about 65, I'll just type in 65 there. And that's gonna affect everything, okay? That's going to be a lot more, let's just zoom out to see what that looks like. That's gonna be a lot more macro, okay? So it's gonna make like his entire shoulder muscle is gonna look more defined. Let's show you this before and the after there, okay? Now what we're gonna do is duplicate that layer. Controller Command J to duplicate that. And this time, instead of focusing on the larger details, we're gonna focus in on some of those smaller details. And that's all we have to do now is double click on that layer and bring the radius down on the high filter, high pass filter. So let's go ahead and click on our high pass filter here. And I'm just gonna bring my radius down. And instead of affecting like large details, we're just affecting small details. So you can see here's a little preview of like his arm for instance, okay? So you can see this is just affecting like skin. And as we go higher, it's affecting like his entire arm. All right, so something like that looks pretty good. So we're sharpening his skin. Now in this case, let's just zoom in. You kind of have to zoom in to see really any difference at all there. Zoom in right about there and you can see there's the before and the after with this. Now the cool part about this is you can actually stack these on top of each other. Like if you want more sharpening on the fine detail, you can just duplicate this layer. So hit Control or Command J a few times and you duplicated your layer a few times. Now, check this out. So because I duplicated that layer over and over again, we get some really cool, nasty, mean sharpening in there. Let's just group all those. And there's the before and the after at the skin level, okay? So kind of zooming out, we've got this layer here is kind of like the overall sharpening and this is at the skin level. So overall and at the skin. Now let's say we wanna bring even more sharpening. You can hit Control or Command J on that overall sharpening. Go in here again to your high pass filter and then you can choose. Do you want you know, a little bit more or a little bit less? So the real key here is to try to get definition at every single level. So you want a lot of definition right here at the skin because that looks just like nasty and mean and gritty a little bit in between and some of the overall as well. All right, that looks cool. And you know what, this layer is like, it looks cool, but maybe I want it to be a little bit less visible. So we're just gonna bring our opacity down just a little bit on that. All right, so let's go ahead and group all of these sharpening layers, just to, so you guys can see, we created a bunch of copies here. Now there's not like, there's not a formula here, right? It's like create seven copies and it'll look good every time. It's totally gonna be by look. So in this case, we've got seven copies of our layer. So we've actually got, um, yeah, we've got seven, seven different sharpening layers going on here. And it's going to be totally dependent on you as to what type of image you want. Now, if this was like a guy, I will tend to over sharpen like this. If this was a girl, I wouldn't sharpen it as much. So it's totally dependent on what you want. And again, this is for like sports type of images. Don't do this with every edit. It's gonna look totally weird. It, it won't make any sense. Okay, let's go ahead and group all these now. So I'm gonna shift click all those and group them. So we can see there's the before and the after with our sharpening, which gives it that really cool sports gritty type look. Now, the problem you get when you sharpen this much is sometimes you get what's called haloing. You can see right around his arm and his bicep, things like that. You see that white area right around there, okay? You really don't want that. So, really easy to get rid of. All we have to do is click a layer mask, 
Notice how I grouped all of my sharpening layers together, okay? Now, we created a layer mask here, and I'm just gonna use my brush tool to paint black on my layer mask. And that's just going to make all of my sharpening layers invisible wherever I paint. All right, it's just a very quick and easy way to get rid of sharpening in like just small specific areas. Okay, there we go, that looks pretty good. Let's do the same thing over here as well. Just gonna paint black on that layer mask, hiding everything in that layer. All right, and let's say we wanted a little bit less sharpening on our subject's face as well. Okay, what we're gonna do, we're gonna use our brush tool, okay? And this time I'm gonna lower the opacity of my brush. So we're gonna bring our brush opacity to about 30%, hit the number three to get to 30%, and I'm just gonna paint right over our subject's face. And that's just gonna make our layer mask look like this. So it's not 100% gone, it's just a little bit gone, so he's not as sharp on his face, bringing more detail to his body. All right, cool, let's go ahead and group our effects and take a look at our before and our after. Here's our before and the after. All right, guys, and that's all you need to do to make your sports portraits nasty and mean and gritty. Just follow these key steps. First, we're gonna be enhancing the highlights and the shadows of our subject. This is simple to do. Just duplicate your background layer and change your blending mode to something like soft light or hard light. Now, this is going to enhance the colors as well as the lights and darks. So to take away some of the colors, just hit Control or Command U to bring up your hue saturation. From here, you can click on your saturation and just drag that bar to the left. It's gonna lower the saturation, giving you a more natural skin tone. Now it's time to sharpen our image. Go ahead and duplicate your bottom layer and bring it all the way up to the top. We're gonna to hit Shift Command U to desaturate this layer because we don't want it to affect color, only the sharpening. All right, next it's time to convert this to a smart object. To convert to a smart object, simply right click and go down to convert to smart object. Now that it's a smart object, we can use smart filters, which can be edited at any time. So we're gonna to go to filter, down to other, and then over to high pass. When we set our layer blend mode to soft light, this high pass layer is going to serve as sharpening. From here, the sharpening is totally up to you. The idea is to create a couple of different layers, some using a lower radius and some using a higher radius. This is gonna allow you to sharpen detail from all the way to the pore size, all the way up to the muscle size. It's gonna be a great amount of sharpening that's gonna really give the image a lot of grit. All right, guys, that's all there is to it. Thanks so much for hanging out with me and watching today's episode. If you love Photoshop and photography like I do, go ahead and click on your screen right about now. We'll send you free Photoshop and photography episodes every single week. And if you have an idea for an episode or a question or a comment about today's episode, leave it right down below. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much, guys. I'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone. Dang, you look so nasty and mean and gritty. For those of you guys who are curious, we are using a new microphone on the set. We're using a Rode Procaster, and no, they did not pay me to do this or anything. Um, I just wanted to upgrade our audio, and we're giving this a test. I know it's like a huge mic is on set right now, and that's like a little bit distracting, but hopefully the audio quality makes up for it, and I kind of don't mind having this on here, actually. I, I think it looks kind of cool. So anyway, figured there'd be some questions about that. Just wanted to hit those for you right before you ask the question. Just answer it beforehand. Feeling so nasty and mean right now. I could just squash you. <laughs>